Welcome to this tutorial on Python code styles and conventions. In this tutorial I will use the Jupyter Notebook b 8 pystyleipanb that you can find in the course repository. So why would you care about styling your code or conventions at all? Basically what you write in your code is up to your creativity. That is completely right. But now imagine you want someone else to reuse your code or you want to reuse someone else's code. Then it is very useful if both codes are written with similar styles. That will help you to recognize functions, methods, variable types and in an ideal case also the meaning of a variable. This is why I will walk you now in these next sections through a Python style guide that is not something that I made up, it is something that the Python community made up based on the so-called PEP8 style guide for Python code. So PEP stands for the Python Enhancement Proposals um, in which the Python developers and com communication features some um, common ideas of how to style code in Python. If you want to see the very basics of the concepts for coding in Python is the so-called easter egg. The easter egg uh, can be found by writing just import this. So if you run this, you're gonna get the Zen of Python. Each of these rules ideally applies to your code. The first one is beautiful is better than ugly. The second one is explicit is better than implicit. Simple is better than complex. So complex is better than complicated. There are many more now of these uh, phrases and it might be a little bit hard to imagine directly what these uh, law, what these ideas of laws or this, uh, this Zen rules mean, but if you are writing your code and you are realizing, oh my function is now getting really complicated, well okay, make it a little bit more complex, then uh, others can understand it maybe better. Once you get to the complex state, you might get then to the state where you see, uh, where you can uh, make it maybe a little bit easier, simplify it a little bit. There are many other rules here, like now is better than never. So recall maybe that pass statement that I mentioned once. If you have uh, a function that you are writing right now, it requires another routine, meaning another function, and you do not really know how to complete it right now, or you cannot do it all, everything at the same time, then um, you can use a pass statement just to complete that function um, for the moment. So now, and then um, do things step by step. Um, these two rules here are two things that I personally like very much. If the implementation is hard to explain, it's probably a bad idea. Um, if it's easy to explain, it's maybe a good idea. Um, so the uh, emphasis here is probably on the it may be a good idea because only because it's easy to explain for you doesn't mean intrinsically that it's a good idea. Other way around, if you cannot explain or if it's really hard to you to explain what you're doing, then it's for very sure a bad idea because you do you may not already be uh, the master of your code. In that case, I would always recommend taking on a piece of paper and draw what you want to do and simplify it to something that you can explain. Now let's look at how the PEP style guide translates to your code layout. There are some comments here on the maximum line length, which is 79 characters for your code. And if you're using inline comments, otherwise for doc strings, you do not want to exceed these 72 characters. One reason for that is if you are writing your code, you might have 
two um, tabs in parallel open if you've got a white screen. Otherwise, if you're just working on a laptop screen, maybe you just have one screen. And these 79 characters will always fit very well into that. If you're exceeding that, then that, that's the moment you need to start to scroll uh, across your screen. And that becomes a little bit inconvenient. So there is, that's one of the reasons that I believe is behind that uh, maximum line length. More important now is the indentation, which does also lead to a failure of your code. So if an, into an error of your code, if the indentation is not correctly implemented. So we have already seen indentations in for loops, in conditional if statements, and you remember we had here these four uh, white spaces or uh, one tab sign that will indent your code. Again, if you're using some smart ID like PyCharm or Spider, um, they will indent automatically uh, your code and you probably will not need to care too much about it. Um, still, if you wanted to get in this loop back to um, the outer level of the loop here, so here we are in the if statement, um, then you need to manually go back here to the indentation level of the for loop. Here another example for indentation. Well, you can write a variable like that here, so that would be a list variable where you have a lot of list items. Um, but the good practice is not writing something like this, um, or even worse, something like this. And you will also recognize here very quickly that you exceeded these 79 characters by far. Um, much better than here would be to indent your list like that. So if you've got a longer list um, that would exceed these 79 characters, having that kind of indentation is um, good style practice. So how would you style now your code if you have not just one parameter or one variable, but you have maybe a formula? Also in that case, you want to use indentation and line breaks to avoid that the length of your line is longer or more than 79 characters. In this code block here, I implemented one example again with uh, pandas. So what you see here is um, the uh, dot get dummies function from pandas. So if you want to use it here, probably you will need to import pandas first to run this code block here. Then you get here again the head. So remember here maybe the uh, pandas uh, tutorial. And that is how your uh, frame looks like. And this is then how you can sum up that frame with uh, style indentation. In Dentation. Blank lines is also something that you want to use, but not overly use in your code. So there are also some basic rules here for using blank lines. If you're writing a function, so you remember here that def keyword, then you want to have two blank lines before your function and two blank lines after your function. If you're writing a method in a class, then you will have only one blank lines wrapping around these methods. In all other cases, use blank lines sparsely. So if you wrote a formula and maybe after writing that formula in your mind, you made up a little mind break and you thought I need to hit the enter key now five times, um, you may want to come back one or two minutes later and remove four of these five times. Indicate that there was a little um, mind break here with one uh, empty line, but not five. <laughs> How would you use now blanks or white spaces uh, beyond indentation? There's also some style guidance here regarding um, the uh, items that you would put in a list or uh, a tuple. 
you would not put a, a white space before a list element, but between list elements after a comma. So basically the same thing that you would use in writing normal text. Similar thing here applies to a tuple. Um, but you would not use here a, a white space if you directly close the parentheses afterwards. And just recall here, narrow white space before a comma, again, exactly like if you would write a text. If you're writing a function or you're calling a function with arguments, um, you may, might have um, the temptation to put a white space here. Uh, your code will probably still work even if you have the white space here, but the good styling would be to have no white space here. So you write the function name, you open the parentheses and you put your argument here. However, if you're defining, declaring or declaring your function and you're putting here something like uh, keyword arguments in the uh, function opening parentheses, then you would not put any white space around that equal signs that assigns a default value to your keyword. When you are defining a dictionary, that is here the uh, good way to do that. You would have again the white space around the equal signs that define the dictionary, then no white sp uh, space after opening the curly brackets, no white space before that colon here, one white space after the colon, then uh, the value that you want to put here, um, but no white space after, before the curly brackets again. In general, you want to add white spaces around any operator or boolean or augmented uh, assignment. So these are all these signs here that you have already met in uh, other tutorials maybe or in other uh, coding uh, exercises. You have seen here already the uh, example here of the dictionary that indicated where you would put a white space um, after the column and the same thing here applies in general if you're using any column. In the tutorial on packages, modules and libraries I already gave some hints on how you optimally import a module package library. And here again the hint that you want to avoid this kind of wildcard import. So you would uh, write here from module import start. So that is called a wildcard import that would import all variables from a module. And that is at the risk of overwriting some basic functions of Python. So if, for instance, that module here would have an own uh, dir direction function, or directory function and you uh, import it here with a wildcard you would even not see it and it would maybe do something completely different from what you expect afterwards. Preferable use therefore import package module so these absolute imports are from uh, package import that and that module. Um, also when you're importing only import one package at a time and avoid these multiple imports. You might see these uh, multiple imports in particular with this combination of OS and sys for uh, anyway also here uh, in my other tutorials apologies for that sometimes just laziness also comes through. Huh? Um, pay attention again when you import a, a module or when you write a package never use a minus sign in the package name which also applies or this rules also applies to any other python file name if you try to run this python file with this minus sign it will not run for uh, or will for very sure not run um, because the minus sign will um, make um, python interpret the package name a little bit differently than what you thought There are also style guidelines for comments in your codes. You might have already seen these inline comments in other tutorials um, 
and that start here with this hashtag sign. I used it occasionally to comment out a line of code that I didn't want to use right now. Um, but you would rather use it to give a hint on what the following line of your code would do. You can also put inline comments directly after an expression. So this phrase here refers, for example, if you would use here that code block to one, two white spaces, then you would put the hashtag and here the inline comment and maybe the right, um, uh, right here what that list does. Um, but these types of inline comments are deprecated. So inline comments are really more like seeing that you did just make a little um, mind refresher here what the following code block, uh, code block does. So just write here something what it, uh, uh, what it uh, does. Um. So now I already uh, misused here uh, one of the code blocks for doc strings. You have already seen doc strings in the tutorial on functions. So doc strings were basically the things that we opened here with these uh, three double apostrophes or three double quotes and we closed it again with these three double quotes. They are very powerful in describing what a function would do or what a class would do or a class method would do because they are automatically attributed here to this uh, underscore underscore doc underscore underscore attribute of a class object. So if we define here a list object, so this is automatically what happens if you're using uh, these uh, brackets, then we can call the list documentations or the doc string of that list by just writing that. So you see here that a, a list is a built-in mutable space. If no argument is given, the constructor creates a new empty list and so on. So these are, this here is the doc string of the list class. And this is what we get by just calling the underscore underscore doc underscore underscore uh, built-in method. And this auto automatically happens if you define these uh, doc strings with the uh, double, uh, three double quotes. This is here more now like a reminder of how you would uh, Im implement doc strings in a function. So first you want to describe the behavior or what the uh, function does. Then you would write here uh, down here the parameters. Um, there's different styles for writing these parameters and this is just one option. So if you want to define then what type of an argument is and that is, there are also different uh, styles to do that. Uh, some folks write here just uh, the string after uh, the column. Um, I normally prefer to write something like this here and then define what uh, this input argument is. So if you run this code block, we get here our docs of, um, or our doc string of the uh, let there be light function. Um, if you want to read more about uh, the recommendations on doc strings, um, please refer to the uh, PEP style guide 257 rather than uh, PEP 8. Um, you can just click on that and it will open the link and you can read more about that. The name styles of variables, classes, py uh, Python file names and so on might look very different um, as a function of the programmers that were behind the package module library or whatever. However, also here is some general style guide available and for understanding these style guides on, uh, style guides on uh, um, name conventions, let's first have a look of what types of, um, of, uh, of styles you can find. So you can either use uh, lowercase letters like that here, uppercase letters, sorry that might sound a little bit trivial, but I still think it's necessary to be clear here on the terminology. Um, so that would be here a uh, lowercase 
and that would here be a lower, be a lower case with underscores. That's an uppercase, an uppercase with underscores. Um, and that here now um, requires probably really some explanation, which is a kernel case, um, also referred to as cap words or capitalized words or a study caps. When you're using these types of uh, camel case or cap words or whatever, and you have an acronym in your variable, then you want to uh, put the whole acronym in uppercase letters. So that is why you would write HTTP re response like that here and not like that. You can also have variables um, defined as mixed case, so starting with a lowercase and then capitalizing every word. Um, you can also use capitalized words with underscores, which is deprecated. Um, what, why is that deprecated? deprecated? Recall maybe that um, Python uh, Zen here of simplicity. So why would you use capital letters? Well, the whole reason of that is just to um, show visually that here starts a new word. For the same reason, you would basically use underscores. So if you use both of them, you would have a double um, let's say, ob, um, visual disturbance of reading your variable with uh, the underscore and the words. So that's not uh, simple, but uh, doubling um, the visual disturbance. So keep it simple with either underscores or just capitalized words. When you are using underscores, or you have also already seen um, the minus sign, you might trigger particular behaviors in Python. So for instance, if you are writing a module and you define a global variable with a single leading underscore, and then you would import your model with this wildcard import, the single leading underscore variable will not, variables will not be imported. If you are using double leading underscore variables, they invoke mangling in classes. We will come back to that, that again in the uh, class tutorial. If you're using double leading underscores, those would define magic method or magic method attributes in a class. So we will uh, see that very early on in the tutorials on classes where um, we have an initialization um, with this init uh, or call magic methods. If you're using this kind of magic attributes, um, do not invent them and rather um, read the uh, chapter here on Python classes where you make reference to the official um, magic objects that are available. If you're using a single tailing underscore, probably want to, uh, to do that just to avoid conflicts with other Python keywords. So for instance, if you want to define here something like class, because class is a keyword, then you would do that. Still, do not uh, try to intentionally overwrite here or uh, name something that is similar to a Python keyword. That might make your, make your code a little bit bumpy. Now, how do we apply these style guides now to object names? Well, first, if we define a class, the class name itself should be in camel case or cap words or capitalized words, however you want to name it. So the name of my own class object should be written something like that. If you have a constant like uh, water density or gravity, these are the ones that you would write in upper case. If you are writing um, error classes, then you can also uh, use these camel case or cap words again. Functions should be generally written in a lower case. Um, you can also find sometimes a mixed case, um, which is then made for reasons of backward compatibility with uh, earlier style guides. Um, but if you are writing new code, please use a lower case. If needed, you can also add an underscore, um, but if you ha don't need to use the underscore, the better it is.
If you're writing here a non-public attribute in a class, then you can start using the uh, you can start with an underscore and then the lowercase name of the function. But recall this will uh, invoke a um, or trigger a particular um, treatment of this method then by Python. Any public method in a class will just follow the st same style guide here as for functions. If you're writing modules, packages, or uh, just create variables or global variables, always use lower cases. One more important um, aspect here of variable naming is never start a Python variable with a numeric um, value. So don't start here, you're uh, writing um, 2D array, rather use array 2D. There are more style, uh, code style recommendations for Python available and I just presented you here those that I think are the most important ones to get a general structure in your code that is um, well understandable uh, across or in the uh, Python community. community. If you want to read more about that, please have a look here at the Python docs. And I close here with a little um, uh, example here for a try except, um, sorry, not for a try except, for an if else statement in a function. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something useful for your code writing here, even if it was technically not very intense. As a little practice or exercise, I propose you just take one of your existing code chunks and try to restyle it.